What's up guys, TC here, and welcome back to Starbound. And today we've got a very first for a new series. This is going to be a uh, how-to video on how to make your own custom weapons. Uh, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a uh, relatively basic, but still custom gun. Uh, and before you dig into this, um, I know this might be a little bit too technical for a lot of you. Um, some of you that are more experienced might find it really basic. Um, the whole point of this video is just to kind of teach people the general understanding of making uh, command-based custom items because they're really fun to make. Um, they're really easy. You don't have to do you know the whole modding side of things. Um, this is kind of a vanilla in-game way to do it. It's a lot more fun to test and uh, play with it. And uh, yeah, I've had a lot of people request it, so I figured I'd put it in. This will probably be a one, maybe a two-part video um, with later videos discussing a little bit more detail about it. Um, so the idea today is for you guys to walk away with your own custom unique gun that we're going to build on camera. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it, it's going to look roughly like this. We're going to customize it quite a bit. I have uh, in the link, or I'm sorry, in the description of this video, there is a paste bin link. And at the top of that uh, paste bin, you're going to find the code for this gun. And then at the bottom, you're going to find the code for our finished product that we're going to you know, end up with today. Um, and so before we get started, there's quite a few things that we're going to need. If, if you're going to follow along and, and do this as I do it to learn, um, you're definitely going to want to have some things ready. So the first one, obviously, is have Starbound up. You're going to want to unpack your assets. I'm not going to explain how to do that. Um, there's plenty of videos out there to explain how to unpack your assets. I don't really need to do that. <clears throat> uh, the third thing you're going to need here, uh, this is the code that I'm using, which is in the description. You're gonna want a, a program that is like a text editor. I'm using Notepad++. Um, this is really useful for uh, for this. This is JSON, JavaScript object notation. And it's really useful because, you know, with, with JSON, you have to balance your brackets out. And uh, text editors are really great for, you know, finding, uh, being able to like quickly search your code for certain words or maybe like a, an unbalanced bracket or an unbalanced brace or something like that. Uh, it helps you debug things really quickly and really easily. Uh, another thing you're going to need is a uh, in your web browser, you're probably going to want to go to a uh, a hex code site. I use HTML color codes, and this is to help color your weapons. Um, this one's online, super easy to use, <clears throat> and it will uh, it'll work with all your weapons, and it's really useful to get uh, a really good looking weapon. And uh, I think that's all you're really going to need. Um, so in game, you'll see this is the weapon we are working on. I have it titled as a sample rifle, and I've got a little description there on it. Um, and so we're going to dig in to the individual parts of this. So let's pop open our uh, our text editor. You can go ahead and paste it in here, and you'll see this. I know it looks like a whole bunch of text, but this is actually a really simple gun. Um, I've made some that are five or six times the size, uh, so this is not too big for me. Um, I'm finally at a point where I feel comfortable kind of teaching most of this. Uh, and, and again, this isn't going to get super in-depth, especially not today. I want to uh, I want to teach you guys how to make your own weapons, at least at a relatively basic level. So you'll see some things that I might skip over, some things I might kind of leave out. Um, if you're more advanced and you already know about it, it's not because I'm trying to, or I, I, I didn't know about it, or I'm trying to get it by you. I, I just feel there are certain aspects that don't need to be, uh, that I don't need to dive into. If they're too advanced, or they might be better for like a later... A later point so with that being said we're gonna dive into the code that I've given you guys and I'm gonna to try to go through here and I think the best way to do it honestly is to kind of break it down into about three or four parts um, the first bit is gonna be like the description the second bit will be the uh, like the animation so the the way the look the gun looks in your hand like what pieces make up the gun what color it is and the third bit is gonna be uh, a two-part I guess it would be based around your the guns uh, the way it shoots, what it shoots, as well as the stances that go along with your primary and secondary ability. So uh, with that being said, let's jump into it. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I uh, have been a little bit sick lately, so I've got to clear my throat. I really apologize for that, but um, hopefully you'll be able to bear with me. So at the starting at the top of our code here, you'll see we have spawn item, rare assault rifle. So you know that the base item itself is a rare assault rifle. The one is just necessary to, uh, to give you an amount that's not like a level or anything. You'll see up here level six. I put it at level six um, just because I like to include this in there. If you want to make a simple gun and not uh, not have to play with any of the the firing capabilities, you can easily beef a gun up just by putting like level nine. You know, that's a really short, simple way uh, to to beef up just a randomly generated gun. Uh, Two-handed does exactly what you think it does. Uh, Two-handed guns uh, pretty much means you can't dual wield it. 
Uh, and it's, it's also going to allow you to use uh, secondary abilities, alt abilities. If you set this to false, it's going to make your gun into a one-handed item. Uh, and even if you have an alt ability in here, it basically just won't be used. So if we set this to false and spawned it in, we'd end up with a assault rifle that we held with two hands because of our stances, but you wouldn't be able to use an alt ability on it uh, because we set it to be two-handed false. The short description, this is going to be the name. So we have it set as sample rifle. We can name this whatever we want. I tend to name my items uh, when I'm finished because a lot of times the item I start with or I start trying to make in the beginning is not anywhere close to the item I end up with. Um, it, things kind of evolve and change over time, and so the name is usually something I do afterwards that reflects what I've done. The tooltip kind, this is interesting. Uh, I like to use base for this. There are a couple different ones. Base is, in my opinion, the most useful, and base is whenever you pop open an item and you look at it, this is a tooltip, right? The thing that pops up here, that's your tooltip. And so the base model, or the base uh, tooltip kind, allows you, to, uh, it allows you to put the text down there where it says, here's where you describe your gun. Uh, and that's my favorite method. It, it really, it's, it's the most versatile. Um, <clears throat> I think it looks the best. And it, it allows you to do more than any other base. And I'm not going to bother, sh you know, including a bunch of other ones uh, in this video. For the description, this is where you'd put that text. Um, so you could describe your gun here, what it does. Um, there's lots of things that you can do here to, to um, <clears throat> well, don't put apostrophes or like weird things like that um, unless you know what you're doing because uh, JavaScript, or JSON will uh, interpret those uh, apostrophes and, and things like that as part of the code. So uh, unless you know what you're doing, don't include those. Uh, the rarity, so this is going to be the, uh, the outlining of it. So there's common, uncommon, rare, legendary, and there's also essential. So you'll see I have this set to legendary, which is what makes this outline here purple. But say I set it to uh, essential. Essential, and now we copy and paste it into our game. You'll see that we're going to get a... Uh, now we get a yellow outline. So it's a, a, a different look. And so the essential, like these items in your hotbar, these are the only ones in the game that use the essential tooltip kind or uh, rarity kind. It looks pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but for most of the stuff I make, I'm going to undo this. Let's see. There we go. Most of the stuff I, like, I make, I like to keep it all the same. So legendary is how I keep it. Category, I have assault rifle. This is just what pops up underneath your item. So right here, you'll see it says sample rifle. And underneath it, it says assault rifle. That's all it is. Um, you can put whatever you want there. You can use it as like an extension of your primary name or a way to categorize your weapons. Or you can put your signature there, wh whatever you'd like to put. Um, your ownership, like your name. Sorry I keep pulling this one up. This is what I do a lot of my stuff in. As you can see, I have a ton of items here. Um, it's, it's like several hundred thousand uh, words. But back to this. Uh, we are at the rarity for category. Uh, we just, um, yeah, we just did that, my bad. Elemental type, poison. If you're making a simple weapon, it's kind of like how I showed you the level thing earlier. With elemental type, this allows you to easily select what uh, element type. So if you want poison, fire, ice, or electric. Um, if you just want to make like a simple gun and you don't feel like customizing a bunch of other crap, you can include this and this is how you can kind of pick which element it is. However, when we do it today, when, when you put this in there, you can override it later with your own projectiles, which you're going to see is what we do. So even though this says poison, this is not a poison rifle and nothing about it is poison. So um, that's just kind of like a, a nice little shortcut. I'm including it in here because I want to give you guys the basics um, and I want to give you the tools you need to succeed in making your own stuff. Now getting on to the animation, this is, uh, this is where you're going to define what your weapon looks like in your hands. And so it goes all the way down to about here. Um, and I know it seems like a lot, but it's really not that bad. Uh, the, the, the thing to remember here is under animation custom, you'll have your animated parts, you'll have your parts, and here's where you'll have your individual named parts, right? So I have middle right here, and every gun, or uh, each weapon category, so, you know, assault rifles, swords, all that stuff, they all have their own default parts. And guns use three by default. They use middle, they use butt with two T's and they use barrel. Those are the three main parts and you can add your own extra ones in there. But by default, this is what it defines in the, uh, in the weapon parts. So for today, we're only going to use these three parts, the middle, 
the butt and the barrel. So we're going to start off by looking uh, at, at just kind of the structure of how these uh, the the image path that we're using here. So you'll see we have uh, an image and it says in parentheses it's going to say items, active, weapons, ranged, rocket launcher, middle, 10, dot PNG. So if you notice, if you know anything about file paths, this is a file path. And so this is leading in our assets, we can pull it up and we can actually follow this file path. And um, like I said, this might be basic to some of you, it might be eye-opening to others, so I'm going to do it anyway. So we just follow that order there, items, active, weapons, ranged, rocket launcher, middle. And here's all of our parts, right? All the guns have 20 pieces each, so that means there's 20 rocket launcher barrels, 20 rocket launcher middles, 20 rocket launcher butts, uh, and the same for every other uh, range weapon for the most part. And so you can follow this, and this is how you can find your piece. And so you see here we have uh, PNG 10. Let's set it to 15 and see what it does to our weapon. So we're going to copy it. <coughs> and it's important to note that this will not change your thumbnail or the, the inventory icon when we change it where we're changing it, uh, but it will change it in your hand. So this is what it used to look like right here. And this is what it looks like now. So this is the new middle. Um, I'm not a fan of this, so I would definitely go back to something else. Let's try um, let's try changing it to 17. See if that looks any cooler. Okay, that's actually not any better. Uh, let's go lower. Let's try seven. Hopefully, we'll get a cool uh, a cool looking part. I don't feel like pulling all the ind individual pieces out. Um, this just doesn't look good. You know, we're gonna go back to what we had, uh, which I think was 10, right? Yeah. So I liked the one we had at first with 10, so we're going to keep it where it is. Now I want to explain um, what a image directive is. So an image directive is, is Starbound's way of adjusting the image that you've put in. All right, so this is, this is our image that we've put in, it's the file path to the image. And image directives <clears throat> are how you can kind of change it. And so this is how you can change the colors, uh, you can change uh, their size, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. I'm only going to show you guys one for today. It's going to be the replace feature. And so uh, this here is the color code for the weapon for that individual middle piece. And so the, I've went ahead and, and I've, I've doled it out in a nice order for you guys so it's pretty easy to understand. Once I explain it, I know it looks like a bunch of like rambly garbage for now, but um, let me explain what it is. So each weapon piece has their own set of, uh, of colors by default. And the game randomly assigns color values to them for the most part. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're taking those default colors and we're replacing them. And that's what the replaced ima image directive does. So you'll see question mark, replace right there. It doesn't loop around very well. Um, but <clears throat> you'll see here, this is the first one. Uh, and we're, this is its default color and we're replacing it with this color, right? And then here's the second color and we're replacing it with this color, right? Here's the third color and we're replacing it with this color, right? And for the most part, as a general rule of thumb, most weapon parts have, uh, I would say it's two sets of three colors. So this is a light, medium, dark, and this is a light, medium, dark, right? So our weapon is currently a orangish, oh, it's orange color and kind of like a dark blue. And so this is where that, uh, that hex code site comes in. So let's take a look at what this color is in the beginning. So you go to your site, paste that hex color in there. And so this is, this is the light color of the blue, right? So Say we wanted to change this to a, uh, a, a greenish olive color, All right? So now we can, we'll copy this. Whoopsie, keep doing that. And we swap it out, right? So now, uh, <clears throat> essentially the light part of this is gonna be changed from light gray to a light green. And so I, what I have it ordered now is light, medium, dark, and then light, medium, dark again, right? So here's a light green. Now we're gonna go to the second one here and we're gonna make it a little bit of darker green. There we go. Kind of an olive color. I'm not saying it's going to look really good. I don't really know how this is going to turn out. And now we're going to take the third one, and this is the dark one. So we're going to pick a dark green. There you go. And we're going to replace that. All right. So now when we spawn this gun in, uh, this should look considerably different color-wise in the middle. Um, so let's spawn it in. There we go. So now you can see the, in the middle part of our gun is now an olive green. It kept that orange color because we didn't change that. But we can change that really quick. So let's, uh, what color goes good with orange? 
Uh, you know what? Let's try. Let's try changing it to like a white because I don't have many um, olive or white colored guns. So we'll take the light. Uh, let's see here. Where were we at? So here's the light, medium, and dark here. So here's the first set of the second color. So this is going to be a light gray. This is going to be a darker gray. And this is going to be a very dark color. So let's go here and go way down to that. Uh, there we go. And now we swap that out. Push it up here. Copy and paste it in our game. And now the, in, the middle part of our gun should look considerably different. So um, I know it's kind of weird looking, but uh, the middle part is changed. So what we're going to do is port that whole, uh, that whole color code we just did over to the other parts of the weapon. All right, so we took the middle, and now we're going to go to the butt and copy it over that bit, paste it, and then we're going to go to the barrel and do the exact same thing. And now our gun is, the whole thing is going to be a new color. So pop it up. There we go. So now we have an olive-colored gun with a kind of a gray hue to it, or hint, I guess, on the different parts of it. And uh, yeah, so it's definitely a unique, different looking gun. As you can see, it's considerably different looking than the thumbnail um, because these are two separate things. You can, you have to make sure they both line up. That's kind of part of the process. So now that we have this looking a little bit differently, <clears throat> it's time to move on. Uh, I, I want to, so I, I pointed out that there is the middle, you know, and then we went through, we did the butt. And, and like I said, you can change each individual one. I'm not going to change the butt because it's kind of obscured by our arms, but Maybe we can change the barrel real quick to something a little bit more appealing. So here's the barrel. So we're going to follow that. And we have it set to ranged shotgun barrel 8. Let's say we try not want to change this to ranged um, sniper rifle. And we're going to change it to barrel 18. All right, so now we're going to see how this looks. There we go. So now you can see it's a different barrel entirely, kind of much more narrow. Um, so as you can also see, this barrel doesn't quite line up with our uh, the muzzle flash. So we'll have to fix that later. That's kind of part of the process. So we'll throw that away. Um, let's try a different barrel. I don't really like that one. Um, let's try 15 and see what that does. And I'm going to show you guys a, some some things on how to get this. Yeah, it looks a little better. Yeah, we'll keep that. That'll work. So the next thing to point out here is the positioning of these items. So the positioning of the barrel there, we're going to keep it as it is. But if you noticed our, um, our muzzle flash was off, you see, it's too far back. And that's the little part that glows right there. It's too far back. Right. And so we are going to move that so that it lines up more correctly. <clears throat> and what you'll see is after each one of these images, you'll see an offset and that's the placement of the, uh, of the image. And it's two numbers right here, so it's basically an X and a Y axis. So the first one here, this 2.2, this is left and right. So a positive number pushes the gun forward, and a negative number pushes the gun back. And this one here is your other attributes. This is 1.1, positive numbers bring your gun up, negative numbers bring it down. So real quick, we're just going to do something silly here and put this up to 4. Okay? So this is going to bring our barrel way up high, like way out of alignment. There you go. So you'll see our barrel is way up there. So you definitely don't want to do that. But I just want to give you a demonstration of what this uh, what this does. Let's undo. Was it 1.1? I hope it was 1.1. Let's see. Yep, that'll work. So now we are going to use what we've just learned to uh, go and adjust our muzzle flash. So another piece of our guns, like we had barrel, middle, and butt, <clears throat> I've also included the muzzle flash in here for you guys. This is something else. I think it makes the guns look a lot better. Um, here's the individual file path for the muzzle flash. And we are going to move it out just a little bit. So like I said, or as you guys can see, it was too close. So we're going to push it out to about 1. Point, let's say 1.7. I think that should fix it. Because it was too close, if you remember. So now it should be a little bit further out. Uh, it's getting there. We'll push out just a little bit further. 1.8 should fix it right up. So we are done with uh, adjusting our weapon the way it looks. We've we've kind of uh, adjusted the, the the muzzle flash so that it lines up with our new barrel. 
the next thing we want to change here is particle emitters. So something you might see here is you'll see when I fire this gun, little particles pop off the bottom. Right, we can change those. We can even have different particles for the primary and secondary. So you'll see here it primary is yellow and the secondary is red. So we can change those here. Uh, and it's important to note there are some uh, dangers with particle emitters. So if you go up here and you put an image in a file path, and maybe it's not a correct file path or it's an image that doesn't exist, the game just won't render it. it. It won't shit itself. It won't, like, crash. It just won't show it. With particle emitters, though, these are different. If you put in a particle that doesn't exist, so here we have this default yellow. This is a particle in the game called default yellow. There's ones for every color. Default red, default blue, default yellow. Um, if you, if I were to put in default mellow instead of default yellow, the game would shit itself and probably crash. So be very careful with particles. Um, you can track down the particles. Um, they're pretty easy to find. Uh, they're in here, so where is it? Particles. And it's, so oddly enough, it's not these in their initial uh, files. It's the ones down here that are outside of it. These are the ones that you can use as uh, particles on your gun. So we use this one here. I'm, I know this is probably super fucking tiny for you guys, but trust me, it's here. Um, this is the default, where's that default yellow? There it is. Here's a default yellow. We're going to change it to uh, default, um, let's see, was there default white? Here it is, yeah, default white. So we'll change this to um, default white. And something that's fun is that, see, I've included more than one particle, so what that means is we can make these different things. We can make this red, white, and blue if we felt like it. Let's do it. Default red. Default blue. So we're getting real uh, freedom up in here. Copy it. Paste it. So now our gun should particle red, white, and blue. There you go. It's a holiday. So that's how you do that part there. And like I said, there's tons of particles. You just kind of got to dig through it. Um, you can make lots of interesting uh, things with those. So we've got our gun with its unique red, white, and blue particles, its unique color. Now we can do the same thing with the alt muzzle flash. So this one here, I only put one in here. I just wanted to give you guys different options. Um, so let's go with default green for the second one. So now when we fire our primary, we'll get red, white, and blue. And when we fire our secondary, we will get green. There you go. So everything is working out properly here. Uh, and like I said, be very careful with the particle emitters. Make sure you spell them right, because if you get even one of them wrong, uh, the game will shit its pampers really fast. Uh, the offset region, I I hate the way they did this. I don't know why they didn't just use an X and Y format, but if you look really closely, this is actually four numbers. 0, 1.2, 0, 1.2. Uh, and this is like... Um, <clears throat> I don't really know how to describe this. I, I don't know what um, formula it is. I've been doing it long enough that I know how to make it put the, the particles where I want them to be. Uh, but essentially, 0, 0, and 1, and 1 line up. Um, you're rarely going to want like a different number. Like If you have a number here on the first one, if this is 2, you're probably going to want this one to be 2 as well. Um, if you want them to be coming out. Because it kind of creates like a longitudinal path that particles can spawn in. Um, I, I honestly don't know how to explain this. Um, someone who's better at math might understand what this... A better way to describe that, I, I don't, so I'm sorry if I failed you there, but I don't know how to describe it. Now, moving on to our next bit here, we are going to go on to sounds. So again, the sounds are included in the animation custom. Even though this isn't an animation, uh, it's still included in there. So uh, the fire state is what we're going to be changing. So every time you fire the gun, this sound is played right here. So again, this is a file path. So we have SFX, which is sound effects, gun, plasma one. So we're going to go find that. Uh, impact. Let's see. I'm going to find our sound effects. I'm going to go to gun. And let's find another one. Um, let's go with AR3 instead of plasma. So AR3. So now our gun's going to sound different uh, from that. And we're going to keep our flamethrower secondary because I like that. So now when we fire it, we're going to get a different noise than we've been getting. But our flamethrower should still work. There we go. So, digging back into here, we've got our noises, how we want them to be, and you can you can actually add more uh, more sound effects. Like, you can make it where there's several different ones they can choose from, um, if you just make it into an array. So, you notice how I have um, a bracket here, and I've got 
uh, curly braces inside of it with several different options. Right? See, this is an array, so it's got several options to choose from. You can do that same thing with sound effects. So you could put um, a, a bracket there and a bracket right, um, a bracket right there, and that would still work. Um, there it is. Everything still works. Okay. Yeah, so that's how you add, like, multiple sounds to it. Uh, let's make sure I didn't break anything here. There we go. Still works. Um, it's important to constantly be, like, double-checking and saving, making sure that your weapon is uh, working the whole time. I've got this thing super zoomed in. Um, mine are normally, like, this size, so I can have, like, multiple on the screen at once. Uh, so in case I break one and I can't figure out what it was, I can always go back to one before. Uh, but on this one here, I've only got one because I want it to be zoomed in as much as I can so you guys can see it. Uh, I'm sorry if it's still too small, but if it gets much, much uh, more zoomed than this, I, I can't, I can't focus on it. It's too big. So we have gotten all of that stuff handled. I think, yeah, that's all of the uh, inventory stuff closed. <clears throat> we are now going to move into the inventory icon. So this is the part that uh, shows up right here, and this part has to be built from scratch as well. So just because you built the item in your animation state or your animation area. Uh, does not mean it's going to be put together. That's why our gun looks differently in our in our inventory. So we are going to change our thing here. You'll see it's um, it's a bracket starts here, it ends here, and it's basically an image file, a position, and then just a comma, and then you just put another one in there. And you can, there's no limit on how many you can put. You can put a hundred of these in there, uh, just like up here with like the parts, middle or whatever. You could have a ton of these. You could have a middle, a barrel, a butt, a grip, a scope. Uh, second but like it doesn't matter what it is you can have an unlimited number um, we're not going to dig into how to do it uh, today for up here um, but it's really easy down here you can put whatever stuff you want um, there is one unique difference though so when you're building stuff in the inventory icon it's important to note that the order that you put them in there matters okay so imagine it like a deck of cards like this image say it's like a, this is a 10 this is a 10 card right I put this in there first, and then if I put this second one here in, imagine this is a 9 card, right? Because it goes in after, if these two images were to overlap, the 9 is the one that's going to be displayed. Because they, they are displayed in the order that they're put in. So if your images have to overlap anywhere, it's important to note your order. So for us, uh, and this part doesn't really matter because most of our gun parts don't overlap. Um, although the barrel might be an issue. Um, but we need to change, let's see, our middle's the same, our, where's our barrels we gotta change? We gotta change that to a sniper rifle. Sniper rifle, barrel, what, 15? So let's see if it looks the same way in the icon as it does in our hands. So as you can see, it's a little bit off. It's not quite the same. Um, I think it needs to be moved out just a little bit. Like just a slight smidge. Um, another annoying aspect of the inventory icon is that the uh, the the positions of units are not the same. So uh, right now it's at nine. We're just going to bring it back to eight because it only needs to be a little bit. Um, whoops! Actually, no, it doesn't go in. It goes out. Uh, I need to bring it up to ten. But you'll see that. So our, our positioning on this one is ten zero in the inventory icon, but the barrel up here is not the same. It's only one point one and one point three. Uh, so. I think it's pixels is what the inventory icon uses as like a unit. So this is like 10, negative 10 pixels, positive 2 pixels, you know. <clears throat> it's not the same as up here. Um, it can be a little bit um, confusing if you don't, didn't know that's how it is. So now we pull it up. Um, actually, let's really quickly, let's, we never changed the color on here. So we need to replace the color from up here so that it reflects that inside of our image down in the icon. So we're just going to copy and paste that. Now we're going to do the change the butt color, and now we're going to do the sniper rifle barrel. There we go. So now our gun should have a matching inventory icon. There it is. So as you can see, our gun now looks the same as it does in our hand. And uh, yeah, so it's not the most beautiful weapon, but it is a custom weapon, and it's your custom weapon, and you've made it. So. Uh, and and once, once you've got these basics down, there's so much stuff you can do. Like, y you can add any image in the game you want to these guns, and you can make them say and do pretty much anything. So what I'd like to get, make sure you guys, like, walk away with this is the basics. And then, you know, I'll do more in-depth videos as we go forward. But I want to get the basics out of the way. 
and uh, then you guys can kind of build some of the smaller stuff you you want you can learn a little bit so we've got our inventory all set up I think that closed right here yeah so this is the end of the inventory icon moving on to the muzzle offset <clears throat> so now we're getting into the actual function of the gun uh, so with this bit here the muzzle offset is just the the position the bullet comes out of the gun um, so I'm, I might break this episode in half here um, I don't know if it ends up being too long I'm gonna break it here so um, like I was saying the muzzle offset is uh, this is where the bullet comes out and so as it stands right now our muzzle offset is okay and it uses the same uh, notation as we did earlier this one is left and right so if you wanted to move it like back further say you've got a really short gun you could reduce this number and if you wanted it to be maybe your guns held up higher you can raise this to a, a higher number to bring it up more uh, the base offset don't mess with this really it, it just moves your gun around but it can cause problems later I've included it because it's it's kind of a default thing just keep it at zero I wouldn't I wouldn't play with it too much <clears throat> now we're getting into the fun stuff so primary ability we have we're gonna ignore this first bit here stances um, and I want to get into the actual uh, firing mechanics so you can just ignore this whole chunk here at first and skip all the way down to uh, DPS base DPS base DPS this stuff's pretty self-explanatory but I'm gonna go through it anyways base DPS is your base damage per second this one's set at 2.9 this helps you adjust the strength of the gun um, it's also important to note that your base DPS will override your if, if you if you define this gun as being 2.9 DPS and then you go down here into the actual projectile and give it a certain power level that this will override that so if you as long as you have one or the other you can define it um, but if you have both the DPS uh, up here will override the other one energy usage this is how much uh, is used per shot um, another thing to know here is that different items use different notations for energy usage so whereas this one uses energy usage the staffs sometimes use energy cost right so you have to know that not every item is going to use the same parameters it's important to look them up uh, in the assets and the way you do that I'm just going to show you really quick um, <clears throat> go up to the items active weapons we're going to go to the staffs and take a look at this um, we're going to look at the control projectile ability and we're just going to pull up the clue X shooter ability so I'm not sure if you guys can see this it's tiny as shit probably um, but see the clue X shooter uses it in even different ones this one uses energy per shot so not even not even energy cost so as you can see it's important to go through and look each item up as you do it or else you're gonna find that it might not be right uh, so moving on we have fire time this is just the rate of fire pretty much so fire time 0.2 this is equivalent to five shots per second <clears throat> if you set this to one like 1.0 it would just be one round per second inaccuracy this is basically degrees of inaccuracy um, as long as it's zero zero that means it's gonna shoot straight um, if you this is very sensitive so you'll see 0, 0.0 is straight but if I set it to 0. point like two it doesn't seem like it'd be much of a change but 0. 0.2 is crazy inaccurate like look where our, our guns shooting all over the place like this is insane so you have to be very very sensitive with inaccuracy don't don't go too hard with it um, I keep it either zero or like 0. 0.01 or something like that for fire type so this is with guns you have two options here you have auto and burst uh, I keep it to auto most of the time but occasionally I do do burst and if you do put burst in there you have to make sure that you define the burst count and the burst time so uh, yeah burst count and burst time sorry I had to double check there to make sure <clears throat> if you don't the game will shit itself because it needs those parameters so I usually stick to auto um, moving on to projectile counts so this is how many bullets are fired every time you click the mouse this is how you make things like shotguns so we have it set to one but say we set this to five we'd now have a rapid fire shotgun although actually let's step back for a second we have it shooting five projectiles at once but we also have our inaccuracy set to zero so it's gonna pack all five rounds into one little spot so we're gonna set this to 0 0.1 and we're gonna give it five shots so now it's gonna fire five bullets at a time with an accuracy or inaccuracy of 0 0.1 so now it's gonna look like an automatic shotgun so that's how you make shotgun type stuff um, that's pretty cool we'll keep that shotguns are fun um, 
So we have our five projectiles. We have our bullet type. Um, I'm using default ones here. This is bullet D, um, B, bullet four, bullet dash four. Um, there's a shit ton of projectiles in this game. Definitely need to go through them to find what you want. Uh, there's all kinds of options. Um, and some of them behave radically different than others too. So there's lots of options there. I'm just going to keep it as bullet four um, for now because it looks cool as on a shotgun. Uh, so the next bit here is projectile parameters. And so this is... Uh, this is where we're going to define our individual bullets. So we've been defining what it shoots and how it shoots. Now we're going to shoot, or we're going to define the individual bullets themselves. <clears throat> so I've included some really useful uh, uh, parameters in here that they're not in use in this particular item, but they're useful a lot of other times. So um, the first one here is a periodic action. So it's an empty bracket, which means it's just you can leave it in, nothing's going to happen. But a periodic action is an action that you can determine uh, that's going to take place while this object exists, right? And so you could make it, you could make a gun that shoots a bullet and make that bullet shoot other bullets uh, with periodic action. So we're not going to do it today. I'm going to save that for a more advanced episode. But I've included the parameter here, so when we do show it, you guys can do it. Because having an empty one here, this doesn't hurt you. Leaving it empty. <clears throat> but this is a really cool way you can make your uh, you can make objects look or make bullets look like other types of projectiles. You can use this to make them glow and do all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so other things we have bounces. So bounces are obviously how many times the bullet can bounce off of a surface. Um, setting it to zero means it hits the ground and it just dies. You can set this up to whatever amount you want, two, three, four, whatever, um, and it'll die when it hits that number. If you want it to bounce indefinitely, you can set this to a negative number. So like negative one, and they would just keep bouncing around uh, until, they dis until they died. So speed, we have it at 120. That's a nice, fast, usable number. Uh, time to live. So this is how long the object will exist before it dies. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so this is going back to the bounce thing. It will, If we set this to negative one, it would bounce around indefinitely for one second. If we set this to 10 seconds, it would bounce around indefinitely for 10 seconds. <clears throat> so that's kind of, uh, it's important to, to make sure, you know, your time to live and all that stuff kind of adds up or you're going to have some really weird things. Uh, I know I like to make some guns that are really strong, but giving them a, a, a short range, you can make the, the projectile disappear really quickly. So like, for instance, may say we're going to make this a really strong shotgun. We might want to make it, the bullets disappear really quickly so that the player has to get closer to use it. So right now you'll see that the bullets are going to disappear before they get to that wall. So you see they're disappearing right about here. Which is good. It's pretty balanced. Like, So anything beyond this range here can't be affected by our shotgun. So it's a really cool way to kind of balance your guns and make them, you know, more unique. So we'll keep that in there too. The knockback, this is uh, really just how hard it knocks you back. And one thing I do like with this that they did in this game is that they made it where monsters have weight. And so you'll find that, you know, five might knock back a small monster, but it won't do shit to a heavy monster. So um, knockback amount kind of matters. It, it depends on uh, the, the target you're shooting. Now the next bit is action on reap. Action on reap is a essentially uh, an action that the game takes whenever your projectile dies. And so uh, grenades, rocket launchers, they all have built-in action on reaps. So it's essentially a rocket that's fired. When it hits the target, the projectile itself doesn't blow up. It has an action on reap. So it dies, and then the action that it causes in it is an explosion. So that's just like the periodic action. Anything that you could plug into this periodic action, you could plug into this action on reap. So this is how you would make a gun that, like a grenade launcher. When the grenade uh, lands on the ground uh, and, it, and, it, and it dies, uh, this action on reap is taken. So this is how you would set up to... Maybe you want to make a gun that when the projectile hits the ground, it shoots a blast straight up in the air. You could do that with action on reap. <clears throat> like I said, we're not going to get into that today, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. You could even make it, like this is how I make those bullets that return to the player when they hit something. I, uh, I include a special projectile that returns back to the player that kicks off when it dies. So you shoot a bullet across the screen, and when it dies, this new projectile is spawned and it comes back to the player. Now, moving on to our alt ability, um, you'll see I, if you, um, so the, the guns only have one primary ability, it's just an action fire, but they have quite a lot of alt abilities, but oddly enough, a lot of them are, are the same. 
Um, so I'm using explosive shot. It's it's really just, uh, I mean, honestly, it's the same as the primary. Something to note that's it's kind of weird. That I feel like a lot of people don't know, and there's not really uh, documented anywhere, is that you can't plug in for like 95% of the time. You can't plug an alt ability into a primary ability. So like take the the spin slash from swords. You can't take a spin slash secondary and put it in the primary. You can't have a, a weapon whose primary ability is a secondary. And, and that's true for about 95% of cases. There are a select few abilities that can, but I think that's because they were originally made to be primary abilities and they ended up porting them to secondary. Um, so it's not really important for today because we're not diving into that much, um, but I just wanted to point that out because I don't think it's documented anywhere. Um, so again, we're back um, after each ability, <clears throat> after you kind of define it, you tend to define the stances that the weapon has. So again, we're gonna skip this for now and finish up with the, the secondaries projectiles. So now we are on the alt ability. Uh, the fire type is again auto. The fire time is set to zero, zero, so that means there's no break between shots. The DPS 0 0.5, which I'm not worried about because it, it, you know, it's a flamethrower, it sets you on fire. Energy usage we have set to 10. The projectile type, we've chosen flamethrower. And the important thing here to, to take away from this is that to make flamethrowers look okay, you have to give them a little bit of an accuracy. So you'll see, yep. see how it's, it's not just a straight line. So that's something I've learned that you have to make sure you do. <clears throat> the projectile count is one, which if you wanted it to be really crazy, you could up that as well. Um, projectile parameters, I've got a pretty low speed on it of 35. Time to live, not very long at all. Um, status effects, so you can put in just a basic status effect, burning or, or you know tar, slow. Something to note here is if you put in a status effect in the game that does not exist, uh, the game won't completely shit its pampers, but what it will do is it kind of bugs out and it makes you have to restart the game. Like you're gonna have to quit out and restart and reload the world if you put a status effect that doesn't exist and you use it on something, because the game tries to apply that status that it doesn't know what it is. Um, so it'll kind of bug out. So make sure you pay close attention. And what will happen is you'll apply that status effect to a monster that doesn't exist and you'll notice that you can't damage it anymore. <clears throat> and because the game doesn't know what to do, like it, it's, it's bugged it out. So if you ever encounter a moment where you're messing with statuses and you attack something and then all of a sudden you can't hurt it anymore, it's definitely a status effect that you put in that doesn't exist. Uh, periodic actions, we're leaving this blank, but again, this is a cool way to you know, put periodic things in there. Knockback is zero because it's fire, and bounces is also zero because fire doesn't bounce, at least not to my knowledge. Now we're gonna, we finished up this little bit here, um, and I wanna tie in the uh, projectile, uh, what is it? Fire time right here. I wanna tie this in with our stances, because that's the last bit we're about to cover here. Um, stances are basically how you hold your gun, as you could imagine. Uh, and you can do a lot with them. You can do really cool things like, uh, where is it? Like this here. So this gun, by default, like you normally shoot and it just kind of holds it like normal. But if you do the other other fire, see that motion there he does? That's all part of stances. That's it's all done with the stances parameters. So there's lots of fun shit you can do with that. Um, but an important thing to note is that your rate of fire is tied directly to your stances. And so with guns, we have three primary modes here. We have idle, fire, and cooldown. They do exactly what you think they do. Idle is how your gun looks when you're holding it, just idly. Fire is the how you're holding your gun when it's being shot. And cooldown is what's happening to your gun between shots. <clears throat> so the important thing to note here is if you're, you'll see there's like duration, there's arm rotation, which you can change. It's just in degrees. So like arm rotation, if you put 90, it's going to bring your gun up. If you put negative 90, it'll bring your, your arm down. Um, weapon rotation, uh, two-handed, or if that's if it's uh, two-handed or not. Uh, allow rotate, this allows you to spin your gun around the character. And allow flip means you can turn back and forth uh, during that time. And then the weapon offset is kind of how you add recoil. So you can basically, during the fire time, I've got a little bit more recoil on this gun. Like basically the, the weapon's position changes for a very brief period. Now, the important thing that I, I keep <laughs> somehow running around <clears throat> is the uh, the duration of the cooldown ties directly in with the fire rate. So if I go in here and I take the fire rate and I set it to 0, 0.0, it's gonna be, um, 
the fire rate is tied directly to it. So if I put the fire... Uh -uh. You'll have to excuse me. I just circled around that twice somehow. So let's... Forgive me. Let's... Uh, let's... Let's... Where's that? Let's go back to the primary ability so I can demonstrate this properly. Fire time is zero right here. And this is the primary ability. And the cooldown is 0 0.1. Right? So if we go down to the fire time, we have it set to 0 0.2. If we made this fire time 0.0, .0 so the gun shoots super fast, it would still only shoot at a rate of 0.1. Because this, this cooldown number here trumps your fire time. After every bullet, it has to go through a, fire, a cooldown stance. So if you want your gun to shoot crazy fast, you have to change more than just the fire time. So make sure you, uh, you know that it, it, it threw me off for a bit at first, especially with things like flamethrowers because uh, you want them to have a, a zero cooldown so that it fires just like a, a bullet hose of fire. And uh, yeah, so we, we've worked our way through most of it now. I think we're, we're pretty much done with um, like the basics and stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's quite a process. It's a big learning curve, but I want you guys to be able to walk away from this with um, some default knowledge on just how to, how to get through the process. So uh, I'm not going to do any crazy stuff, but if you wanted to, let's see, uh, let's, let's do a demonstration of a, um, of one of these cool things. Let's change up the cooldown a little bit to 0.25. Um, and I want to do a gun rotation. We're going to do something fun here. Um, 360. So what this should do is should spin our gun every cooldown, every time it shoots. There we go. So you can do really crazy, wacky stuff like that. Um, we're obviously going to go back and change this, though, because that's... It, it looks really cool on, like, one-handed things like pistols, but obviously when you're holding a gun with two hands, uh, it doesn't really doesn't really work out well. So, anyways, that's going to wrap it up, I think. I know this has been kind of a weird episode, definitely different. It's been very technical. Um, for those of you who made it all the way to the end, I applaud you. Um, it's definitely been uh, something like a first time for me as well. I intend on making more of these episodes. Um, <clears throat> maybe not all back to back to back or something like that, but I wanted to get out at least a, def a, uh, a default entry level version that you guys could kind of play along with. And, and with what I've shown you today, you can make, you know, 90% of the guns that you want to make. You, know, you can make rocket launchers, you can make machine guns and snipers and shotgun snipers and flamethrowers and all kinds of stuff with everything I've shown you today. So I'll be sure to include our uh, the finished weapon that I put in there so you guys can study it along with our original one so you can kind of compare the differences. Um, I know this has been kind of an odd video. It's a first time for me. So if it's something you like and you want to see more of, let me know. If not, you know, you don't have to like it. Just let me know what you didn't like, what you do like. Um, any kind of criticisms constructively, please, uh, you might have. Let me know. I'd definitely like to make it a little bit better series. So anyways, it's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please rate, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later.